Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our class Trading with GAN Fans and Other Indicators. Now, I would appreciate it if you could click on the subscribe button and subscribe to my YouTube channel or hit the bell icon down below and we'll notify you every time I put up a new webinar. Otherwise, we won't bother you. But thank you very much and please subscribe. Now, today we're going to be discussing GAN Fans or GAN Fans, however you wish to say it. And other indicators. Now the fact is I've, had, I've been asked to do several times a class on GAN fans. It seems to be a fairly well used indicator um, today that now that we have these Java charts that allow us to put just about everything on our charts and traders are always asking me for stuff but you know what I can't be the expert on everything or I'm not the expert on everything. So please I've done my research. I've known what GAN fans are for a long time, but I don't really trade with them, not because they're good, bad, or indifferent, only because when I started trading and building my strategies, these were not applicable, and I've never incorporated them into any of my trading plans. So I am aware of them, and I'll share that information with you. I've asked, also asked a friend to prepare a little presentation that will show you how to properly put them on and square them up on your charts and we'll, we'll, we'll get through this and I want to make sure that you do learn the basics. But GANVANS falls into an area of technical analysis, which is a method of evaluating the assets by analyzing statistics generated by the markets. A technician looks to take the emotion out of investing by applying rules. Whereas a fundamental analyst is looking for economic trends, news, headlines, now the problem with focusing only on valuation is that overvalued assets can get more overvalued and undervalued assets can get more undervalued. Very often technical analysis or analysts will skip analyzing an assets prospects and values and assume that the market is doing everything for them because the price of the asset reflects everything publicly known and expected about the company. Now, despite all its fancy and exotic tools, it employs technical anal analysis really to study supply and demand in the market in an attempt to determine what direction or trend will continue in the future. Or in other words, technical analysis attempts to understand the emotions in the market by studying the market itself. Now, I throw all that in the trash can. I change the word technical analysis chart analysis because any technical analysis is done on a chart. So when you look at a price chart and you're just looking at it, you don't have anything on it, you're still doing technical analysis. But this word technical analysis just scares people and it sounds like it's this overcomplicated scientific algorithmic mathematical mumbo jumbo. So let's just break it down to it is analyzing price and price movement on your charts. Now, if you also believe in my personal opinion that price is completely random. Price moves the way price moves because millions of human beings around the world are doing things that they want to do. And there is really a very difficult way or to predict what human beings are going to do next. So anybody who tells you that they can predict where price is going to be is full of bunk. But there are certain times that price moves in a non-random fashion. And what is this non-random fashion? It is a trend. When a trend begins and price is trending, whether uptrend or downtrend, it's, and you have a well-developed trend. We're not talking about just shifts in price upward. We're talking about a well-developed, pretty trend. We have non-random action. When we're having non-random price movement, we can interpret that price movement. So technical analysis, one of the basic assumptions of technical analysis is that price moves in trends. But price can only be moving three ways. It can be moving up, it can be moving down, or it can be staying sideways. And just because it's moving up or down does not mean it is trending up or down. Okay. 
Now, you also have to remember that not every strategy does everything you ever want. So you have to determine, do you want trading signals? Do you want entry points? Do you want exit points? Do you want stop loss points? Okay. And you can combine many indicators and many different techniques to get these. But one of the most important things we need to have on our charts to understand human action, to understand where prices might stop or hem and haw, or the steps on a ladder as the price climbs up or down, is support and resistance. So regardless of the time frame you use, whether it's a one minute or a weekly, you want to know where price moved up and hit resistance and reversed from a price or when price moved down and it bounced off of support. Okay. Now, the words support and resistance today are interchangeable. If you imagine you're an elevator and the floor below your feet is your support and you have to break up through that ceiling, that is your resistance. When you break through that ceiling, that ceiling becomes your support below your feet and the next ceiling becomes your resistance. When that elevator reverses and comes back down, it reverses itself. So the terms support and resistance are interchangeable. So I don't change my support level because price reversed and came down and becomes resistant. I just know it's an important level on my price charts. And I know when I see price moving down, what I can expect. And when I see price moving up towards it, I know what to expect. So just think of it as the floor below your feet and the ceiling above your head and figure out which way the elevators go. But it's important to be able to see these on your charts because they will help you determine where to put buy orders, sell orders, where to put stop losses, take profits, and where to expect the next market action. Now, there are many, 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 many ways that we can do this. And using overlapping methods of getting these support and resistance levels can help us really isolate a particular price on a chart or a particular range on a chart that will become interesting in that movement of price when it is moving in a non-random fashion. So many traders consider price action have special relevance when identifying support and resistance for one compelling reason that the market has actually traded this asset at those price levels before, and we want to see what the market did at those price levels before. And the more the merrier. The more times that that elevator has stopped on the first floor and then gone up to the third floor, the more it's important. But if there's three elevators in the building, you want to see what each one of those elevators is doing, because maybe one tends to go up to six and seven, while the other tends to go to three and four. Or one stops more on two. Well, I don't know why, but it's just the way the randomness of the elevator. So we can do this by combining multiple indicators that give us support and resistance levels on our charts to isolate this information better. So which elements of support and resistance works best? Well, it depends on your strategy. But these levels can help traders build approaches to work with those probabilities looking to limit risk while maximizing gains. So one of the well-known indicators that is used because it has a predictive quality is GAN fans. GAN studies have been used by active traders for decades. And even though the futures and stock markets have changed considerably, they remain a popular method of analyzing an asset's direction. New trading areas, such as the foreign exchange market Forex and the invention of the exchange traded funds have also made it necessary to revisit some of the construction rules and the application concepts. Also, the new Java charts, the new HTML charts have made adding GAN boxes, GAN fans, GAN squares, very, very easy to add onto your charts. So although the basic construction of GAN angles remains the same, we've had to, over time, adjust a few components. Forex traders who are new 
to GAN theory often asks which GAN angles are most effective in predicting price and time movement. The answer depends on the particular market. Finding the most effective ratio is a subjective exercise that can most easily be determined by using well-built expert advisors and optimizing maximum trading systems. GAN angles and other indicators are counterintuitive to proponents of the efficient market hypothesis, which holds that past price action cannot accurately predict future price movements. In fact, GAN theory offers winning predictive tools for traders experienced in their use. This short explanation about why GAN theory works is when uptrending market prices reverse and then breach and fall below the descending angle, ascending angles, those prices will usually then drop to the next GAN angle. Likewise, when downtrending markets reverse, they breach upward through the nearby descending angles. And these prices tend to continue upward and achieve price levels to the next closest angle. So all of that's a lot of words. So let's look at it on a chart. So GAN angles start off with the center, which is a one-to-one, -one, which is a 45 degree angle placed on your chart. And you find GAN fans by looking on your chart. And I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step process to add these in a second. But you can come here and you can find GAN. So you have the GAN box, you have the GAN square, you have the GAN square fixed, you have the GAN fan. What we're using here is the GAN fan. Now, figuring out where to start your GAN fan and what angle to take it out at is a very difficult hypothesis. But you want to put it on from the lowest price in the previous trend, or the lowest price to where this trend begins, and extend it on a 45 degree angle out into the future. Now the rest of these angles, okay, which is the 3-1, the 2-1, one, the 1-1 one, is the 45, and each one is a division of 45. Okay. And you go 45, 90, 135, and you go backwards the other way. All of these are dropped on there automatically for you. You don't have to do anything except place the first GAN line on your chart. So you have to locate the significant low or the significant high, depending on which way the asset's moving, and then determine where you're going to extend your GAN fan into the future. Okay. So, you can learn more about this by actually going over to um, TradingView and click on their education section and look under GAN fans. And this is where this chart that you're looking at right now just came from. And this shows you the proper drop down and a combination of using GAN fans with wave theory. <clears throat> okay. Now, GAN fans alone don't help you. On one, there's nothing you're going to actually be able to use GAN for on its own. Combining GAN with support and resistance levels and Fibonacci retracement levels can help you apply GAN. And the thing about GAN fans are is they extend out into the future. So this is why we say they have a predictive quality because we would expect when price is trading in this range that this, what we're only looking at, we're not looking at the center. We're looking at these lines, the the what do I want to call them? The bones of the umbrella. Okay. And these form support and resistance levels. Now I'm going to show you in a second how we would combine this with regular support and resistance levels that we've eyeballed and dropped on our chart and with fib levels. And then together where they intersect, we can predict what we would expect price to do. So let's go back to my PowerPoint and let's try to explain these to you. So GAN angles are a popular analysis and trading tool that are used to measure key elements such as pattern, time, and price. The GAN angle is a diagonal line that moves at a uniform rate of speed into the future. The trend line is created by connecting the bottoms and tops in the case of an uptrend and the tops and the tops in the case of a downtrend. The benefit of drawing a GAN angle compared to a trend line is that it moves at a uniform rate of speed. This allows the analyst to forecast where the price is going to be 
on a particular date in the future or a particular time in the future. This is not to say that GAN angles always predict where the market will be, but the analyst will know where the GAN angle will be, and this will help gauge the strength and the direction of a trend. A trend line, on the other hand, does have some predictive value, but because of the constant adjustments that usually take place, it's unreliable in making long-term forecasts. Where GAN fans, once they are set, do not move because price can break through each one of those parts of the umbrella of the GAN fan, but the GAN fan itself doesn't move. So as mentioned earlier, the key concept to grasp when working with GAN fans is the past, the present, and future all exist on the same time on the angle. So GAN fans then up give us a support and resistance level. Okay. Now GAN angles are 1 times 2, 1 times 1, 2 times 1. These are the main angles of the GAN fan starting out at 45 degrees. Finally, GAN fans are used to forecast important tops and bottoms and changes in trend lines. This is a mathematical technique known as squaring. And squaring we're not going to particularly go over today. To draw a GAN fan, one should select this object and indicate the initial point in the chart. The best way to get the perfect GAN fan 45 degree angle every time is to use the GAN square tool. Once you've overlaid the square onto your charts, open the settings and make sure all available fan levels are visible. Then make your, all your arches and levels not visible. Now, each time you, you drop the fan, the angle will always be in the perfect 45 degrees without having to measure. Okay. So I guess, okay, this is the right place to show you my little presentation of exactly how to put technical analysis video. I was just going to film it and send it to one of my students because he was asking for it. But I figured it was a good excuse to go ahead and get that information out there. I was going to show you the technically correct way to go ahead and set your gone fans okay now what you're gonna do you're gonna start out on your highest time frame okay not your weekly that's a little bit too high you could if you wanted to but the reason being is you want to make sure that you understand where the macros are so that way when you're, when you're on the lower time frames you can understand if you're sitting at a major support or a major resistance that way when time comes you can make the correct decision all right so You'll see a couple things I have set up here, all right? This is my, what I chose as my low. This is my high, okay? And you would say, your high is right here. No, <laughs> okay, so when you're doing your GAN fans, you wanna make sure they're, they're symmetrical and they create a triangle, okay? When you have it starting here and here, it's lopsided, it's not exact. So, what you need to do is you need to find the cross point between your low and your high and that is going to be where you start your down channels. One second. I feel like an old man with these glasses. Okay. So, we're going to start our gone fan. We're going to start with the down channels. Okay. And this is the trend angle tool. What you'll find when you use it, you'll click. You can click and drag and try to make the angle yourself. Or, you can double click, go to coordinates. Type in 45 degrees, oh my god, 45 degrees, and it will set it for you. That way you can be really accurate with what you're doing. Uh, we're going to do 40, I got I to gotta click on this. 45, negative 45, and then fish, go lay down, buddy. Go lay down. Just like 5 to 10 more minutes, I'll be done with this video. Okay, so... We're going to go with our GAN fans. We're going to start our down channels at this cross point. Line it up with that trend angle. Okay. Same thing with this. Go here. Line it up. And boom. Everything is symmetrical. And you'll know if you did this correctly. Okay. You'll have these little intersections between the down channels and the up channels. Okay. Drew that circle way too big. But... If you take your fib retracements, which is the next step in completing this technical analysis, do this, drag from top to bottom, 
and I like to line up the diagonal line of my fiber tracements with one of the con fans just to make it look more clean. Don't have it taking up as much space. And that way everything is perfect. So you'll see that the 50% retracement is in line with these intersections, which is the 50% of the triangle. Everything works out perfectly. That's why I love about this. If you if you see any inconsistencies, if a target does not bring you down to a support, you're doing something wrong. So I love it so much. It is really, really, really good. Okay. Now you can see that everything lines up perfectly. We have tapped off gone fan after gone fan after fibre tracement after gone fan after gone fan after fibre tracement. Everything is in line with itself. Okay. And you can use this as, to set your targets. You can use this to, um, you know, find out when you're going to break out, anything like that, okay? This, for example, right here, all right? I like to show this off a lot. So, you want to find out what your most important fib retracement, uh, not fib retracement, well, yes, fib retracement of Gon fan that is acting as support or resistance for your current pattern, okay? So, this right here is the common denominator in all of the uptrends and downtrends okay even though we've gotten wicks past this every single candle body except for these two right here has fallen below it and tapped off of it so this is our resistance this is our support now you have three chunks to this pattern okay when it goes from top to bottom that is your target right here okay I'm going to take these over to the side and line these up. And what you'll see is when we drop down from the consolidation, okay, we first fell to the first target. We consolidated for a little bit for a couple weeks and we almost made it to the second target. Not quite. Okay. Now, if this is just a longer form of consolidation, we could potentially make it to the third target. Now, this third target, if we come over here, would be right here at 6,500. That would be the next bottom if we do get that low. Put them on your charts. A proper, uh, properly selected and drawn angle is a form of a moving average, but unlike a moving average, it can be, it can project out into the future ahead of the price action. Drawing angles correctly and using the proper use of the angle is crucial in successfully technical analysis. So let's sit back and watch this little short presentation on how to apply, how to put these on your charts step by step. Now that you see how to put them on, and you saw how we added them with Fibonacci's, trading methodology developed by GAMFANS have become a very popular tool to help analyze an asset's trajectory. Now, not to be confused with 10 lines, despite having, giving vital information about trends, a GAN line is a diagonal linear array that is set to measure the amount, the specified amount of a change in price. The GAN line is a diagonal linear array that is set to measure a, spec a specified amount of change in price versus a specified change in time. Now, GAN, level, GAN lines are a commonly employed technical tool to discover where potential support and resistance levels lie. So when applying this indicator to your trading thread, the GAMFAN can be especially useful for determining potential entry and exit points. However, the first task is to understand just how bearish or bullish the asset's momentum is. Once a GAN line is broken, the next line becomes the relevant levels for price. So GAN angles provide support and resistance. But GAN angles do not help you individually on, their own, on your own. 
you should be using, like I said, support and resistance, and as you saw in our little presentation, fib levels. Because GAN angles determine strength and weaknesses of the market. So GAN angles can be a valuable tool to the analysis or trader if used properly. Having an open mind and grasping the concept that the past, present, future all exist on the same time on the GAN angle can help you analyze and trade a market with more accuracy. Learning the characteristics of different markets in regards to volatility, price scale, and how markets move within a GAN angle framework will help improve your analytic skills. So thank you very much for joining us today. I hope you learned a little bit about GAM fans. It's again, like I said, I have a limited education here because I just, or limited experience because I just don't use them. But I hope I opened your mind and answered some questions and then you can become the expert at GAM fans. So thank you very much and watch our other videos. Bye now.